Welcome to SpaceCast. I'm Josh, and I'm back with my friend Bob Hall, who is the Director of Operations for the ComSpoc, the Commercial Space Operations Center. The ComSpoc has a global network of sensors that they take that data and they they process it and they come up with a catalog of all the things in space. And so Bob spends a lot of time watching what's going on, particularly in GEO, and seeing what satellites are doing and uh, their maneuvers and uh, where, where they're going and what they're doing to change their orbits on a daily basis and who they're coming close to. So Bob is here to talk to us again about something interesting that he's been uh, keeping an eye on. Bob, welcome. Thanks, Josh. And today you're going to be talking about one that I don't know much about, uh, the TJS-3 satellite. Do you want to yep. give a little background on what that guy is? So, uh, yeah, TJS-3 is a Chinese satellite, um, is a Chinese, uh, by all reports, a Chinese military mission. Um, and by all reports, you mean open source data? Yeah, I but, think it's a, yep. it's a you know, Chinese secret mission, meaning they're not going to tell the world what it is. I mean, that's not unusual. Lots of countries have, you know, secret sure. satellites that they don't want to tell people what it is. The, and this was launched um, late in December and got up to GEO uh, right around January 1st-ish or so. The interesting thing is um, it showed up in GEO, and I'm showing the, the orbit here in a Earth-fixed frame, so the you know, with respect to the subsurface of the Earth, how the satellite's moving. So it's, that, that's one rev there, one day. Um, the interesting thing is that there was this other object that showed up with it from the launch. Uh, now, China, to the best of my knowledge, still has not announced a second payload. In other words, they, they never said that there was another satellite being launched. Um, and so by default, uh, the way it went into the public catalog, the U.S. public catalog, it, it was given the name of a TJS-3 AKM. Uh, AKM stands for Apogee Kick Motor, mm -hmm. which is an upper stage. Uh, it's one type of upper stage that could be used to deliver a satellite to, let's say, GEO. Uh, and then once it's done, it is usually disposed of. So it's oftentimes what you will do is you will, let's say you use the AKM to get close to GEO uh, you get off the AKM, and the AKM, you know, does a final maneuver and is dead. And then the satellite uses its own thrusters to move a little bit into geo. So the AKM took you like 99% of the way there, or 99 and a half. And the AKM then is left in a non-geo orbit. It's not in an orbit that it's, it's not a collision get risk right. for the okay. 500 active geos of the world, which is kind of pricey real estate. Mm -hmm. So, so difference number one is besides the fact it wasn't announced. This thing is perfectly in geo. That's the blue guy here. And the fact it wasn't announced is atypical. That's what you're, like you're supposed well, to declare. If it's just an upper stage, that's okay. People don't necessarily announce upper stages. So that's why it was named this way. Mm -hmm. Again, the, but again, the, the Chinese didn't name it. Uh, the U.S., the catalog comes from the U.S. and, and with no uh, claim, essentially, that it's something else, that's what the U.S. named it. Okay, fine. But again, it, it's perfectly in geo. So you see it, it's going up and down here, very, very small. It, it's, not, it's really not inclined. This, this north-south motion is small. This is a, a very tiny inclination, what you would see with an operational uh, satellite. Uh, it's coplanar, meaning it's perfectly in sync with TGS-3. That also is not necessarily unusual. If the two objects came from the same launch, the fact that they're left at the same inclination, okay. But, but yet, you don't leave a dead upper stage here. On purpose. So, so that was that was weird. Yes. Yep. Yes. Very weird. And you see that they are, um, at this instant, I paused at 93 kilometers apart from each other. Uh, and you'll see that number changes. And so what I'm, I'm dragging through January here, if you watch the clock in the lower left, you see what's happening. They're drifting, drifting. Now, by this time, yep. I, I kind of went right over it. January 4th, we saw this AKM thing uh, do a maneuver. So that was unusual. And then January 10th, it did another maneuver. So again, if, if it was an, an upper stage, a spent upper stage from a end of December mission, there's no way it's doing maneuvers on January 4th and 10th. So, so that, that also got our attention. So now I have a mm -hmm. couple of things to say. This is not you know, an AKM. Uh, we also looked at the photonic. And those maneuvers were not to give it an inclination to get out of the way. Right, right. right. They were basically station keeping maneuvers to adjust the, the east-west drift. Notice how these guys are staying kind of in sync. I'm going through January here. Now, yeah, Bob, this, is, Bob is scrubbing through time, if you can yeah, see his mouse at the bottom My mouse is there. on the bottom, so I'm going so backwards and forwards. So now we're around uh, January. Is that 
16th, 19th. And on a Saturday, the AKM moved. It said, oh, it's going somewhere. And it moved over about a tenth of a degree. And two days later, on Monday, TGS-3 followed. So this is but one of many examples where these two guys are operating in concert. They're, what, whatever TGS-3 is, which again, unannounced, you know, whatever, this other thing, this mystery object, they're acting in concert. And so you're going to see they slide uh, to the east a little bit, and then they both do a station keeping maneuver almost at the same time to go back to the west. Because this part of the, the geo belt, the, the, the forces are such that your satellite will, uh, the acceleration's to the east. So you, you do a maneuver to kick it west, and it turns around, and, you, and you, you keep doing that over and over again. And that's what these guys kept doing. So I'm going back and forth, back and forth. So there's an established relationship between these two guys. Notice the range is, is generally around 100 kilometers or so. So they're, they're not uber tight. They're not doing a rendezvous and prox ops. They're not, you know, circling one another. So at this point, TGS-3 does a maneuver to kind of half the distance. And again, they, they're, look, they're operating in perfect concert. They're station keeping together. So they've got this established pattern of doing something together. Not sure what it is, not sure what it, sure either one is, but it was very weird that there was this mystery object and it was not a dead object. We also looked at the photometry, which is the basically the light data. So we would look at this with telescopes. Each object has a brightness. And if you look at the brightness over time, uh, we've got uh, algorithms that will tell us things like the spin period, uh, or if it's not spinning, uh, and we can, t or so we can tell if a thing is, if an object is tumbling. So when, it, when an active geo has a problem and fails and it starts to tumble because its attitude is not working, we can see that. We could tell in this case that this thing was not tumbling. So again, another indication it's stable that it's, it's not yeah, a yeah. dead thing. So it had this behavior. Uh, quick question for you, Bob. You said you said that is not uh, rendezvous proximity operations. And so it's not close enough to be classified as that. So what would you call it? I mean, it's kind of rendezvousing at a distance. Yeah, well, it, that's a good question. Um, so the reason I'm not calling it rendezvous is they're both dropped off here and they're just acting in a coordinated fashion. It's not... A destination. Uh, you know, again, they're, they're about... They were 100 kilometers apart. Now they're in where I'm, I have the screen frozen. They're 50 kilometers apart. You could, you know, if you came from halfway around the world and you parked next to a guy at 50, you might call that a rendezvous. Um, okay. I, I'm just, it doesn't appear like that. It's, the mission doesn't appear like a Proxops mission. Um, it, it's kind of, I guess, a subjective use. So now I want to switch to, uh, now we are in uh, mid-May, and they're still doing their thing. They're still 50 kilometers apart. Uh, what's the date? May May, May 12th or something, I, I can't see. So, so here they are, and they're still doing their thing. By the way, those boxes are just the boxes we assigned them based on watching their behavior where they spent a lot of their time. It's just something we put together for ourselves. We do that for all geos. And what happened was, again, on a, this is like a Friday, they, their inclination wasn't big. I mean, I've zoomed way in. This little up and down motion wasn't a lot, but they did a maneuver. How, how much is not a lot? A uh, tenth of a degree or less. Okay. So 73 kilometers. I, I'd have to look at what it was. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, a tenth of a degree of plane. Oh, um, okay. So they did a maneuver literally uh, to the same minute. So it's like synchronized swimming in space. And you're, you're detecting those maneuvers and processing through them when you're watching these. Yes, 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 yes. And so you, you have a pretty good idea of when this happens as it happens. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our, the software we use to detect maneuvers is, is really a, one of the linchpins of our highly accurate catalog. The ability to, with our filter-based technology, solve for the maneuver and fly through the maneuver and iterate on the solution, characterize the behavior so we can... We can not only solve for it, we can then build up a, a data set on an object and say what's normal and what's not normal for a guy. Um, but we, we saw this, so they, they kind of killed their inclination even further. And if you notice, they started to slide ever so slightly to the west. And if you look right now, 
TJS3 is right where TJS, uh, sorry, TJS3 AKM is right where the TJS3 had been. Uh, so it presented a challenge to some tracking networks because uh, confuse the observations. Easy to confuse the observations. We call it cross tagging, um, and then they 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 killed the the little westerly drift they had, and as they stopped. But then 48 hours later, TJS3 left. And if I drag it, they left. And and they have been drifting ever since. They're going at about 2.5, 2.6 degrees per day. They're going east. And they're still drifting today. Yeah, they are still drifting today and, and today. Their attitude is stable? 18th. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, this was intentional. They did two maneuvers 12 hours apart to go from circular here to circular here. One, two, right? They don't want to be crossing the geo belt. They don't want to be a conjunction risk. So you notice, if you imagine the geo belt is, whoops, imagine the geo belt is at this altitude, mm -hmm. they are below geo altitude, which is why they're going east with respect to the surface of the earth. But they are roughly circular, which is why they're not bouncing around up here. But besides the fact that they're on the move, the AKM stayed home. So a uh, couple of things based on my ops experience this tells me. A lot of times when you launch a satellite, especially the GEO, you park it somewhere at like a test station. And you have a test program. Depending on the mission, it could be a couple of days, a couple of weeks, could be three, four, five months where you have a series of, of checkout things you want to do. You want to turn on this and turn on this and does this work? And if I run the comm, you know, from this antenna through this amplifier to that antenna, does that all work? And you do all the tests, mm -hmm. brand new satellite, shake it down. That's normal. And then when you're happy, you then move it somewhere else. Normally the test station is where your test facilities can see it. It's near where you inject it into geo. It's where it's convenient for you. And then let's say you have a, let's say a global constellation. You may want to move it halfway around the world for its operational mission. Depends. So you do your test, and then you start a drift. This being launched at the end of December, sitting here from January through mid-May, uh, and then leaving, has all the appearances of they've completed their on-orbit test and checkout of TGS-3. And it's on its way to its operational station. Again, I don't know what the mission is. I don't know what the station is. But it sure seems like they finished the test. They're on the way to operational station. Number two, the AKM didn't go with it. But based on the fact that for four months, they played nice together in mm -hmm. a very coordinated fashion, and they were launched together, it sure seems like the AKM was some sort of test object. So not rendezvous and prox ops, because they didn't get real close and personal and stuff. So it wasn't like they were trying to do no an orbital docking. dance around each right. other. But there's some sort of test purpose this thing had for this guy's mission. And again, it appears that that purpose has been served. So they left it here, and this guy's going to his, his operational home. So we'll watch where he goes. He's been drifting now for a little over a month. We'll see what happens. Great. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. For, that was very informative. I think uh, you guys are going to be keeping an eye on it. So if anything else interesting comes up, we'll bring you back. You can tell us what's going on or if the AKM itself moves or whatever. Sure, sure. Uh, thanks again. All right.